Mathematics, June 2023. Mechanics, paper 32. 2023. Question number one. A car is initially at rest on a straight horizontal road. The car then accelerates along the road with a constant acceleration of 3.2 meters per second squared. Find the speed of the car after five seconds and the distance traveled by the car in the first five seconds. Using SUVAT, S-U-V-A-T. S, we don't know. Initial speed is zero. Final speed, we don't know. Acceleration is 3.2. Acceleration is 3.2 meters per second squared. And the time is five seconds. So using V equals to U plus A T. U is zero, A is 3.2, T is five. That gives us V to be 16 meters per second. S is equal to U, T plus half A, T squared. U is zero, T is five, A is 3.2, T is five. And that gives you S to be 40 meters. Another way to do it is to use V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. Make S the subject is V squared minus U squared over 2A. Sub in V squared, V is 16. V squared minus 0 over 2 times 3.2. And that gives you 40 meters. That's the complete answer for question number one. Question number two. A particle of mass, five kilograms. The particle is pulled along a rough horizontal plane by a horizontal force of magnitude, 28 Newtons. The only resistance to motion is a frictional force of magnitude, F Newtons as shown in figure one. Find the magnitude of the normal reaction of the plane on P. So we want to find the magnitude of the normal reaction. So what we want to do is we have the diagram, a very neat diagram, it's very important. The force is acting, the weight is coming downwards. W equals to mg, mass times gravity. Five times g, g is for gravity. And the reaction upwards are weight coming pairs downward and upward. So R is the same. So we put R is the same as five times 9.8 because it's not moving up or down. So R is 49 Newtons. So the particle is accelerating along the plane at 1.4 meters per second squared. Find the value of F. So the normal reaction is 49 Newtons. Resultant force equals to mass times acceleration using Newton's second law. Newton's second law. Resultant force is 28. The forward force minus F. Forward force minus backward force is equals to MA. So 28, rearrange it, 28 minus MA is equals to F. So M is five, A is 1.4. So 28 minus five times 1.4, it gives you 21 Newtons. The coefficient of friction between P and the plane is mu. Find the value of mu, giving your answer to two significant figures. F is equals to mu r. We know F is 21. R is 49. 
So rearrange it, mu is equals to F divided by R. So mu is 0 0.43. Question number three. At time t seconds where t is greater than or equal to zero, a particle p has velocity v meters per second, where v is given by that expression there. Find the speed of the particle at time t equal to zero. So the speed is the magnitude of velocity. Those straight line means the absolute value of the magnitude of velocity. Put t equals to zero. So put zero there, zero there, zero there. You get seven i minus three j. And find the magnitude, seven squared plus minus three squared, it gives you square root of 58. So the speed is square root of 58 meters per second. The value of t when p is moving parallel is moving parallel to i plus j. So that means put it i is equals to j. So that means t squared minus 3t plus 7, which is the i, has to be equals to the j. And you solve it for t. And t would be 2 because t is greater than or equal to 0. And I use the graphics calculator. I put that equation, that left-hand side there, and I put the right-hand side here. And it gives me the answer of minus 5 and 2. But we only want the positive one, 2, because it's bigger than 0. And I use the function solve n. So I know what the answer is before I do the algebra. And you can put it in your calculator as a quadratic, the ax squared plus bx plus c. That's a, that's b, that's c, and it gives you the two answers there. But see, the acceleration of p at time t seconds. Acceleration is given by differentiating the velocity, dv over dt, very important to remember that. So when you differentiate t squared, you get 2t. You differentiate minus 3t, you get minus 3. You differentiate 7, you get 0. You differentiate 2t squared, you get 4t. You differentiate minus 3, you get 0. So substitute t equals to 2. You give the acceleration of i plus 8j. And the magnitude of acceleration is the 1 squared plus 8 squared. It gives you 3 meters per second squared. Question number four. A particle P is moving on a smooth horizontal plane. The particle has constant acceleration 2.4 i plus j meters per second squared. At time t equals to zero, the particle passes through A. At time t equals to five seconds, the particle passes through B. The velocity of p is as it passes through a is the velocity of p as it passes through a is minus 16 i minus 3 j meters per second. Find the speed of p as it passes through b. So with this type of question, we want to put the what we know, the silver stuff we know. So acceleration, initial velocity. The velocity as it passes through A, the acceleration, we don't know the final velocity. T is five seconds. We use V equals to U plus A T. We write minus 16 and minus three. We write it as column vector. Plus A is five, the acceleration at time. So T is five. And the acceleration is 2.4 and 1. There you write as column vector. You multiply that out 5 times 2.4 plus minus 16, it gives you minus 4. 5 times 1 plus minus 3 gives you 2. So velocity is minus 4i plus 2j. So to get the speed, speed is the magnitude of velocity. So minus 4 squared plus 2 squared, it gives you 
two root five meters per second, and that's the speed at D. The position vector of A is minus, is 44i minus 10j. At time t equals to t seconds, where t is bigger than five, greater than five. P passes through the point C. The position vector of C is 4i plus cj. Find the value of t. We're going to use the Schubert equation s equals to ut plus half a t squared. And another very important equation to know is this arrow node is the position where you start from. Arrow node is where you start from plus the new position. So we would call this arrow node is arrow A because it started at A. So arrow node is the initial and we use it as arrow A because it started at A and it's 44i minus 10j, so that's where you start. And the arrow we're going to have is the arrow C, the final arrow is the arrow C, where you end, you end at 4i plus cj. The initial speed, minus 10i, minus 16i minus 10j, and the acceleration, 2.4i plus j. Put that together in the equation, ROC is your position, final position. ROA is the initial position. And then U, the initial speed times the time. That's UT plus half AT squared. That's A there. Now we need to multiply out. Remove the brackets and you get that expression there. Now we put all the ones with I together. Very important, all the components with I together. So the 44 has I in it, the 16 T has I in it, the 1.2 T squared has I in it. Put all of them together. And that matches with the four, the, the cos has I in And put all the ones with J together. Minus 10 has J, minus three T has J, and a half T, squared as j now you want to equate the ones which have eyes the ones with i together make them equal i put it in yellow there the four should be equals to that expression now you solve it in your calculator you will get t equals to 10 over 3 and t equals to 10 seconds 10 over 3 is not possible because the question says t has to be greater than 5 so we're going to use t equals to 10 seconds. Find the value of c. We want to equate the j component to find c. So we go to that expression or the equation. All the ones that have j will make them equal. So the c there has j. And let me take this yellow off. The C there has the J, so that's C. Minus 10, minus 3T, half T squared, they're all for the J. So equate these two. But we know T is equals to 10 from part A, from the part above, from part B. So put T is 10. Replace T with 10. Put that in your calculator. You will get C to be 10. And I've got a picture of here where you put in the calculator, you get 10 to solve the quadratic. If you want to solve that quadratic, put that in the calculator. No, not that one. Put it in the calculator, you get T to be 10. Question number five. For this type of question, we're going to be using this summary here. Very important to learn it. If I were you, you have to learn the horizontal component u cos alpha, the vertical component u sine alpha. You may as well just memorize it. Saves you a lot of trouble. And to know that the horizontally acceleration is zero and the formula for distance is velocity times time. 
And you can also memorize the maximum height reached and the time of flight. And then the other ones you can derive them. Saves you a lot of time in exams. A very important part that. So looking at it horizontally, UX, that's why it's X, is horizontal, the X direction. It's U cos alpha. And you put U is 28. So it becomes 28 cos alpha. And the horizontal distance is that UX times T. So 28 cos alpha times T. Now you make T the subject. T would be 40 divided by 28 cos alpha. You divide 40 by 4, divide 28 by 4. You get 10 over 7 cos alpha. So your U is 28. Sx is 40, and T is the capital T. So that's what you need to show for the first part. Show that tan squared alpha minus 4 tan alpha plus 3 equals to 0. We're going to use Sy is equals to Uyt plus half Ayt squared, that formula there, from this, that Schubert equation. So SY is 20 meters, acceleration is minus 9.8 because vertically, since acceleration is minus 9.8 because when we throw it, it's going up, which we use as negative and then coming down is positive. That's why we have negative there. So we have UY is 28 sine alpha and we get that by resolving the the force is there. And T is T, which is 10 over 7 cos alpha. So substitute that in that equation. So SY is 20, UY is 28 sine alpha. The T is the capital T. The half stays the same. Acceleration is minus 9.8. And then we put the T squared. But we know T is seven, 10 over 7 cos alpha. So we substitute that in to get the 10 over 7 cos alpha, 10 over 7 cos alpha squared. So we substitute for T and for T squared. Now we have to start using the calculator to simplify. You get this next expression when you start to simplify them. 7 squared is 49. 10 squared is 100. That's how you get that. Cosec squared, one over cosec squared is sec squared. So that changes that to that. And sec squared is one plus tan squared. That changes to the next one. Very, very important. Now you remove the bracket. Now you've got everything with tangent. Minus 10, minus 20, minus 30. And then you divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10. You get that expression there. Find the greatest possible height in meters of the ball above the ground as the ball moves from O to A. The greatest possible height. At the maximum height, the velocity is zero. And that formula I showed you earlier to memorize it. You can just write it and use it. You don't have to go through this deriving. So v squared equals to u squared plus 2as. But we are using only the y components. So the maximum height v is 0. So the initial uy is 28 sine alpha. Acceleration is minus 9.8. We don't know sy. So we put vy is 0 squared. Ui is 28 sine alpha squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times Sy. So we want to find Sy, we rearrange it to that expression. We need to find alpha and sub in because we don't know what alpha is. So from part B, part B, we knew tan alpha was, let me write this neatly, 
and sub in. We knew tan alpha was that expression, that quadratic. You solve the quadratic, you can call that x squared minus 4x plus 3 equal to 0. Put in your calculator and you solve it. You get tan alpha is 1. Alpha is 45 degrees. And when tan alpha is 3, alpha is 71.57 degrees. So the bigger angle means bigger height. I'll, I'll show you a picture of that. When the angle is bigger, the height will be bigger. So we're going to use the bigger angle. You use 71.57, and that gives you SY to be 36 meters. This is a picture that illustrates it. If you see the angle there of 75 degrees, you see it goes to the highest point. When the angle is 45 degrees, it doesn't go as high. When the angle is 30 degrees, it doesn't go as high. So the biggest angle goes the highest height. So that's why we use the biggest angle for that question. The model does not include air resistance. Normally, air resistance is a standard, but they've taken this out. So they want you to think of another reason. State one other limitation of the model. So you have to think of something else. So you think of all the assumptions they use for projectile motion. There is the, if due, the effect due to air resistance, they've given that in the question. We don't want that in our answer. We want to choose something else. Another effect could be curvature of the earth is negligible. The effect due to rotation of the earth is negligible. The acceleration due to gravity is constant over the range of motion. Pick any of those. Or you can look at the assumptions for the projectile motion. We ignore air friction, which is a resistance. We ignore rotation of the earth. Rotation of the earth and then the friction. Those two are usually common. And we say G is constant in the magnitude and direction, which it might not be. So the free fall acceleration G is constant, is directed downward. That friction is there. So you have those different equations. So these are just general equations I've put in here now to help you. Time of flight, you can remember those ones. The range. These are things you might come across which you need to just know. Some of them, it saves you a lot of time in exams. You can learn all of this, learn as many of them as possible. Formula for projectile motions. This one at the bottom there. Whatever you remember on all of this, it saves you time in exams to work them out and use them. And then you have the motion, the Seward equation, which is given in exams. Question number six, 